So, I mean, <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> the guy, the guy, the car didn't stop until literally I was halfway across the intersection. Welcome back, everyone. How you doing? Uh, today is a pretty nice day. It might rain here, so I'm going to take advantage of this little break we have in the weather. I've got my summer gear on because it's already humid and very warm as you can see here so I'm gonna be wearing my summer gear so anytime it gets warm and nice and somewhat sunny it's supposed to rain I got an hour or maybe two hours before it starts raining so I'm going to take advantage. I'm going to, I'm going to take advantage of that and go on a nice, quick, fast run. So this is going to be a quick run around the uh, quick ride. Uh, I will, however, turn on my rear lights. I'll leave the pannier bag on because it's too much work to take it off. Uh, uh, oh, you know what? I forgot the battery. <laughs> I guess I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm back. I got the battery. Probably the, one of the most important things on an electric bike, I think. I think it's safe to say that. All right. Get that going. Excellent. All right. All right, all right, uh, let's get going here. We'll see if the uh, waterproof housing uh, fogs up or not. I've been doing in some research into uh, to see if, uh, if I could do something about that. Uh, okay, so I got about According to this, I got about 926 miles. Actually, have more than that um, uh, because I, the way I set the speed setting, my wheel diameter, um, I have to double the mileage to get the right odometer reading. So, I think 300 miles is actually actual miles, and the rest of it is actually needs to be doubled. So, 600, 1200. I got over almost 2,000 miles on this bike, almost. Anyways, let's just get going here. Okay. All right, so where am I gonna go today? Uh, today's just gonna be a road ride. I didn't bring my backpack in the front. Of course, my emergency kit in the back. I will turn on my lights. And I think I'll just be speed riding most of this. So you're gonna get a good, nice speed ride here. And again, I hope the lens does not fog up. I'm working on a solution. I've, I'm gonna give this a try, I guess it wouldn't hurt. Uh, worst case scenario, I might have to drill some holes into the uh, into the uh, waterproof uh, housing of the Insta 361. All right, here I go. Pedal assist five, gear seven. All right. So. Worst case scenario, on the waterproof housing, what I can do is uh, drill some holes in the, the waterproof housing, but I don't want to do that because then that would ruin the waterproofness. 
I might purchase uh, some new ones if, if I have to, but let's see if my other option works out. I've heard uh, I'm thinking about putting some anti-fog around the lens on the inside. It's windy out here. Plus I got the near bag. But if I put some anti-fog Let's see if that works out. The other thing is, uh, and maybe another option I'll try out, is uh, shaving cream. So, put some shaving cream on the inside, let the residue build up, and then uh, wipe it off. And maybe that will prevent fogging on the inside of the... Uh, The levees are full of water out here. Getting cool. Anyways. I want to do my quick run. Ride the bike while it's still warm. And the sun is out. Because I think it might start raining. So. So I recently saw some videos of people who, uh, wow, a lot of wind here. Uh, so people who own, uh, who got their uh, uh, juice bikes, hyper fat juice bikes. I'm actually curious about that because uh, I like to, like every guy, I guess, you want more speed, you want more power. And there's some plus and minuses about having more speed and more power. So, the plus side is, well, you go faster. And so, I saw, I saw some videos of I think uh, juice bikes, uh, Hyper 1100, and they go up to 30 or maybe even 40 miles an hour, which I think is great if you're riding on a road. But the irony is that uh, you're not allowed to ride those bikes on the road. Yeah, it's only a uh, private land only. So that's the irony. That's the irony of the uh, of the juice uh, juice uh, juice bike Hyper Fed 1100. Is they're not row legal, but I think people are going to ride it anyway, which. The videos I've seen show that people riding their uh, class three electric bikes on the road and sidewalks. So, but anyways, the pros is when you're in traffic, when you're in traffic and you're riding around, that uh, you get to keep up with the traffic, the cars. So, but you, you have to understand that you're on a bicycle and, uh, you know, there's like, uh, 
a different way of riding around. Like, you drive a car differently than you would a motorcycle or even a moped. And then you would also ride your bike, your bicycle, differently than a motorcycle or a moped. And then also a skateboard. You would ride your skateboard differently than a bicycle. And so, I think if you understand how to ride in traffic and uh, go around the uh, different areas, sidewalks, off-road and everything, you would, uh, I'm going slowing down here because I'm on the sidewalk. You would understand like uh, how to uh, merge into the traffic and be a part of traffic on a bicycle. So, I don't know how much of a pro it would be to have more speed on a on your electric bicycle so you can keep up with traffic. And there's also an, an expectation level of, of your surroundings. Like, when people see you on a bike, they expect you to go at a bike speed. Maybe you could be faster, maybe you could be slower, but what... what uh, motorist don't expect is your bicycle to keep up with their uh, motor vehicles and so um, you know that that's for the for the rider you know that's a that's a plus right you think it's a plus to keep up with the uh, traffic but I think uh, for your surrounding vehicles it's a minus because they're not expecting you to to uh, be so fast and they're gonna probably most likely pull out in front of you. Oh, a little wet here. A little wet. I slow down. It did rain. I'm just cutting through here. Oh, a lot Alright, fender's working great. Awesome. So, you know, so pros and cons, you know, of having a faster electric bicycle. So, I don't, I mean, I, I'm interested in it because of the speed, but at the same time, is it practical? Is it, is it, is it going to put me in danger? Or, or is it going to uh, make me safer? And, uh, you know, when a lot of people who ride electric bikes, you know, I've, uh, you know, I see them, they're like in sandals or whatever, you know. When someone rides a motorcycle, they, they, uh, they wear, they gear up way differently than someone who rides a bicycle. And, uh, I mean, you, well, it depends who's riding, but in general, Someone who rides a motorcycle or even a moped, the helmets are even different. So, you know, speed is the, uh, the variable. If speed's a variable, then here's something to consider. The faster you go, the chances of a serious injury, and serious meaning like, uh, I would say serious as in a broken bone to a concussion to death. So you can get a serious injury the faster you go. It is actually exponential. Your, your chances of a serious injury is exponential. And so, uh, so uh, you know, you, you really have to be careful here. making just sounding off here make sure you know you never know who's coming around that corner again uh, and you have to be aware of other other people with with your bike as well so not only could you injure yourself you could injure others so there's you know so there's
So, I mean, <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> the guy, the guy, the car didn't stop until literally I was halfway across the intersection. So you gotta ask yourself, does is speed, does going faster make it safer for you? I don't know. Now, nor normally I would take the, those hills up there, but I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna let some of the traffic pass and before we get back on the road here. Seems like a precarious morning already. signal throttling and going and gear up so is it worth it I mean the when I look at bikes that go over 20 miles an hour 30 40 they're they're more expensive they typically have larger battery packs on average they're heavier as well and so uh, you gotta think of what are you using your bike for? Now I'm using my bike for, gee, everything, anything I can do, everything and anything. I've got the accessories, the racks to make sure I ride safely and I get to my destination or home safely. I got the my toolkit and everything. I mean, everything's fun until you uh, get an injury and my thumb got injured. If you seen that video where I uh, well, my tires were, were wet and I got onto some coated concrete surface it's really windy right now well so I got on some coated concrete surface and I was only going 12 miles an hour and I just turned I just turned the uh, handlebar to the left just to just to just to uh, make a turn and the bike slipped right underneath me. It was a sunny day. It was, I was riding on grass and that's what got my tires wet and the early morning dew. And then I went onto a, a, a coated or a painted concrete surface and the bike slid right underneath me. And uh, I'm not 100% recovered not 100% recovered, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm okay. But the fact is, that little entry, and I, I could survive that. That's 12 miles an hour. I didn't have to go to the hospital, but that injury woke me up. It woke me up. I realized then, I know I have an electric bike. I know I'm wearing a helmet. And at the time, I was wearing a body armor. My, my soft body armor that is a bulletproof body armor but you can still get injured that was my wake-up call that was my wake-up call and in a lot of ways I'm glad that happened because uh, you know speed can kill you even on a bicycle so don't be don't be don't fool yourself uh, a lot of a lot of people on bikes get killed not even going fast. They get killed by cars coming out, uh, people that don't pay attention, they don't have their lights on, they don't have their rear lights on, nobody sees them. I mean, a, a motorcycle statistic, most accidents that are caused on motorcycles is because another motorist didn't see the motorcycle had nothing to do with the motorcyclist so you know take that into consideration when you're you're going fast now I know I pedal fast and I test the uh, speed out on the bike but I'm pedaling that's my own power I can't keep up that speed forever I'm gonna get exhausted because the motor cuts off at a certain point and then it's all my power and the weight of the bike, the resistance, wind resistance, the weight slows you down dramatically, especially for this fat tire bike. Especially for this fat tire bike. 
Oh. So, there's a red light. And, you know, eventually, if you ride the bike, if you ride your bicycle long enough, you're going to get into an accident. You are going to fall off your bike. It's statistically, it's, it's statistics. You're just going to fall off your bike. It's proven. And so, to reduce that chance, to reduce your injury, serious injury, as in a broken bone or concussion or even death, uh, speed is the main factor. But most importantly, other than speed, just be aware of your surroundings. Just be aware of your surroundings. That's all you have to do. I'm gonna take a... No, I'm gonna be right here. I'll be right here. So just be aware of your surroundings. Have a mirror so you know what's behind you, what's coming up behind you. And look around. That's all you have to do. Be aware. And if you see something coming or uh, you see something coming, slow down or take uh, evasive action. You have to be defensive on your bicycle, not offensive. Uh, it's, it's, it's rare that you have to be offensive to avoid a, an injury or accident or something. Uh, it's rare, but it, it, it does happen. It does happen. That's where I'm gonna throttle a little bit. And so, and the other thing is, uh, uh, know your territory, know your terrain. That's, uh, that's probably the third thing. If you understand the terrain, like when it rains, what part is slippery, when it's dry, what part is uh, okay to go fast, make a turn, um, understanding your terrain. Uh, that's probably the third thing to avoid injury and accidents. So, just a, I guess a public service announcement, but but I'm, I'm, I am interested in that juice bikes because I don't, I, I wouldn't mind the speed. But the other thing is, if it's the, the problem I have is like uh, if it's meant for private use, which usually means non-paved road going at that speed on that bike 40 miles an hour 30 on an off-terrain road I mean I have a tough time on the Red Rover and it goes like maybe 70 miles on full throttle maybe I don't usually pedal when I go off-roading uh, if I'm full throttling yet I don't I don't go to pedal assist five and pedal because it's just just too bumpy for me to handle I got to stand up on my uh, on the pedals just to absorb some of the uh, bumps Anyways, I'm home. I think I'm going to call it a day. I just wanted a quick ride. And, oh, thing already fogged up on me. Uh, the front camera already fogged on my... Hopefully the rear camera... Let's see if I can, I can do this. Oh, I can't. <laughs> oh. Let's see if the front camera. Okay, nope. So the front camera stayed on. All right, there, there's my ride, everybody. Uh, I did uh, use the pannier bag. Uh, this is probably going to be my setup. I'm going to leave the pannier bag on. Uh, there's nothing in the pannier bag. Uh, but I noticed with the pannier bag, it does slow me down because you can see the uh, it just sticks out and the wind hits it. It causes drag. Uh, it probably takes away like three to four miles an hour away from me when I'm riding. But I'll just leave it on. It's good training for your legs. This is this is all about enjoying the ride, getting fit, getting stronger, and that's that's my goal. Anyways, I uh, hope you all enjoy this episode. Thumbs up, everyone. See y'all later. Bye.